Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, he serves on the January 6th committee. He's also on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Sir, thank you for being with us this morning. What is this signaling to you that Cipollone has been subpoenaed? Uh, what does that tell you about where DOJ is going here? Well, I don't, again, I don't know that this, I, you guys are reporting it. I'm sure it's true. Um, I haven't heard this from the committee's perspective. Just generally, I'll say uh, this is probably bad for pres former President Trump. I mean, this is, if, if uh, he goes in front of the grand jury, it shows that this is more than, you know, what did John Eastman do, the uh, attorney that basically came up with that crazy scheme to overturn the election. Uh, and it probably is a very deep interest in what the president did. And so I think, you know, in terms of their negotiations, they uh, obviously the Justice Department knows better what they can, in essence, get around when it comes to saying executive privilege. Um, and so I hope they, you know, go at that judiciously. I hope I hope Pat Cipollone actually just tells the truth. I have no doubt that he hasn't, but there's no reason to protect particularly criminal behavior or what could potentially be criminal behavior behind executive executive privilege. So we'll see where this goes, but there's no doubt that this uh, investigation has developed further along than where we either knew it was or thought it was a few months ago. Is Cipollone an area where the committee and DOJ are cooperating? I'm not going to get into that. I, I, I'm, you know, we've we've shared 20 transcripts with DOJ. Uh, we have an, an open conversation with them, but uh, I'm not going to get into the details of any of that. So CNN right now is reporting the Pentagon wiped the phones of top departing officials at the end of the Trump administration. They deleted any text from key witnesses. Uh, this is an initial court filing, of course, that was in March that was asking for this information. Why didn't the committee know about this before? See, I don't know. And that's I, I think I'm I'm almost more interested in why we didn't know than even why these messages were deleted, although of course we're quite interested in that, is you know, we we've made it clear what we were interested in reading, particularly with the Secret Service. We knew that there were texts we needed to see. Uh and you know, we find out the inspector general knew months prior to even when he told us he knew about missing texts. So I don't necessarily know if this is some massive cover-up. It certainly stinks to high heaven. But in the worst case, it's just failure to follow through on records keeping, in which case that in itself is, a, is, a, is an act that needs followed through on. So, look, it's we had the two, like one of the most intense days for the U.S. military and particularly for the Secret Service since 9-11. The idea that you would go through then a technology mitigation or migration and be like, yeah, I don't care if you delete all your texts from like the two most, one of the most important days as far as the Secret Service is concerned. It just doesn't really, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Where are you guys on working to try to recover some of that, working with forensic, uh, you know, technicians who might have some insight into this? Have you made any headway there? Well, we're certainly trying, but I mean, I, I think, I think it's, not something we're going to let up on, but, you know, I, I'm not sure to what extent we can get this stuff back. I know we're asking those questions and trying to figure that out, uh, as many are, but it's possible it's just gone. And, you know, if somebody intends to make something go away, it can go away. You're and not, so, you're not hopeful. Uh, yeah, you're, it's too bad. You're not hopeful you're going to get any of this. Well, I'm, I don't know. I, I just don't know what to be hopeful on with this or not. Um, here's what I am hopeful for, at least, is that somebody comes forward and tells us what they know. Um, if there's somebody that knows, for instance, that these were intentionally erased, I mean, that is your duty as an American to come forward and say something. And if you know, let's be honest, if you know that it was just an accident, uh, then we need to know that too. I mean, that's obviously something that seems kind of fishy, but it's possible. Let's, let's be honest. So I'm a little more confident that somebody's going to come forward and tell us something that we don't know with that than I am that we're going to be able to recover it. But uh, we're certainly trying. I know you were closely watching these primary elections as we all were last night. You called it disgusting here on, on this program that Democrats uh, were helping elevate election deniers in the hopes that they would be easier to defeat in a general against a more moderate Republican. One of the moderates in the race is Peter Meyer lost his primary. What's your reaction? Yeah, I mean, it's it's. You know, if Peter's opponent wins and goes on to November and wins, the, the Democrats own that. Congratulations. I mean, here's the thing. Don't keep coming to me asking where are all the good Republicans that defend democracy and then take your donors' money and spend half a million dollars 
promoting one of the worst election deniers that's out there. I mean, you know, the DCCC needs to be ashamed of themselves. Thankfully, some members of Congress, Democrats, have spoken out and said they're disgusted. I respect it. I have spoken out against the National Republican Congressional Committee many times when they've done things I've disagreed with. And there are also people that say, well, this is just politics, how cynical that is. And that's why I think Americans are just sick of both parties, to be honest with you. I also want to ask you about the speaker's trip to Taiwan. Um, you're seeing China respond. What do you think? Look, I got to say, uh, that was courageous of the speaker to do. Um, She deserves credit. I I was concerned that, you know, after this kind of pressure mounted that she would back off. And she went through and she is tough in doing that. And and she had to do it. Um, Look, China um, is going to try to look tough. I don't think they want to escalate. I think uh, Mr. Xi is running again and he wants to basically send a message to the Communist Party. But look, this is important for us as a country to to recognize strength. When you do something out of strength, it actually makes conflict less likely. And by Nancy Pelosi following through and going to Taiwan, she sent a message that we will not be intimidated. I wish, frankly, the administration had sent that message instead of saying, well, we don't want her to go. But that said, she did. And it was, I think, a, a, a good moment for the United States. After this visit, as you say, a good moment for the United States, in your opinion, Closer to any sort of confrontation with China, do you think the U.S. Do you think, think the U.S. is closer? I think we're closer every day. I don't think it's necessarily related to this. It's related to China's desire to to take Taiwan. It's just like Russia and Ukraine. Um, and so, yeah, I think every day we're closer. I think, frankly, conflict is uh, very likely, not necessarily in the near future, but at some point in the future. And this is why standing up with strength and making it clear that we will defend our friends, uh, I think, is important to mitigate that possibility. How are you seeing the U.S. yesterday taking out the leader of Al Qaeda in Kabul? Obviously, a very successful operation, and yet there he was in Kabul. Certainly sends a message to Al Qaeda they're not safe in Kabul. But what is the takeaway for you about the safety of the U.S.? I think the takeaway is we're a little safer with Zawahiri dead. Um, I also want to say to any of the the people I've heard in my party that are like somehow saying that this isn't a big deal, just shut up and be an American for one day. Um, You know, this is a this is a good deal. Now, what's the bad of this? Certainly the Taliban or elements of the Taliban, completely unsurprisingly to me, um, and I guess completely unsurprisingly to the administration, I heard uh, an administration official say yesterday, oh, yeah, we knew that there was going to be a relationship. But obviously the Taliban and al-Qaeda are back in bed. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised at that. We have really been hampered in our ability to fight terrorism. We can, strate- we can do very good tactical things like kill a man if we know where he is. But the strategic implications of what we can do in counterterrorism, building alliances, denying area to an enemy, knowing what their plans are, that has been massively hampered. So, look, let's celebrate this win. I'm glad he's dead, but let's go into this eyes wide open. You've got to stay on the offensive against terrorists because they have not changed their opinion. They haven't changed their mind. They still want to do to us what they did, uh, you know, on 9-11. Congressman Kinzinger, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks for being with us. You bet. Take care.